Hi, my name is Jim Rossman. I'm the Stewardship Coordinator at the Wakoit Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. And I'm here today to talk to you about a solution we came up with to get researchers and equipment on and off of our fragile marsh systems. At the Research Reserve, we do multiple research projects out on our marshes, and we're always faced with the question about what type of damage are we doing to the ecosystem as we're studying it. In the case of we designed some boardwalks to look at a longer term project. It was going to be a two year project and we needed to move equipment that was upwards of 200 pounds and multiple people on and off the marsh every week. We decided we needed to build some type of boardwalk infrastructure. We wanted to build something that would, would be able to remove from the project site once we were done. So today I'd like to show you the design we came up with and, and put a piece of that boardwalk together to give you a feel for what uh, work goes into that. The design of the boardwalk is built around being able to move garden carts, which with about a 21 inch wheelbase on the garden cart. So this is a 21 inch frame. Um, the pieces are setting in a, in a jig. They're just loose in here. Um, it's simply just a negative of the boardwalk itself. And it gives us some positive surfaces to put our, our sections in. We have two rails on the side that kind of give us our weight support. And then we have cross pieces in the middle uh, to support our, our our surface material for the boardwalk, which I'll show you in a minute. These cross pieces are all cut 19 inches. Most of them are, are pressure treated two by fours. We also have a, a two by six in the center here, and I'll show you what that's for in a minute, and a two by 10 on the end. Um, building the jig was a big time saver. Um, you know, once we had a design in place, we decided this is what we were going with. Um, this allowed us to cut everything ahead of time, snap it all into place. And if you had multiple people working on the jig, uh, we were able to build each piece in about five minutes. As I said, we cut all the pieces to standard size. We push everything into the jig so we got positive contact with all the surfaces. And then the first uh, step would be to drill. So we just use power drills here. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm just pre-drilling all the placements for my screws into my cross pieces. It straightly simplifies the process and then, and then what I'll do is I'll switch over. The screws we're using today are just off the shelf uh, decking screws, but they are for exterior use. Uh, these ones happen to be three inches in length. We found out that works pretty good. Tighten this all down. Okay, after we have our frame put together, we just make sure that we've caught all the spots. So the next step would be to um, put the decking surface on. We've looked at several possibilities for this uh, from the very beginning of this project. We decided the frame uh, was going to be the same because it was all off the shelf type of material. The decking was going to be something we needed to build. We did look at work using plywood, uh, simple plywood as a decking. The problem with that is that um, you know it would buckle over time in the weather and we wanted something we could get multiple years of use and possibly even multiple projects use. So we we're looking at things we can purchase. Um, I'll just show you a couple that we decided not to go with and tell you why. Uh, this first material is actually from a farm supply catalog. Um, and uh, it, it actually is a, it's actually a good material. It comes in two foot uh, widths, four foot lengths that kind of snap together. And we decided this was an acceptable product. The problem was the cost was a little prohibitive in this case. We are building about 850 feet of boardwalk. And this material runs about $6 a foot. Uh, and we just decided that wasn't going to work for us. But it is something we, we have used in other applications. Another uh, piece that we came up with is this is a this is a piece of attic deck is what the company that makes this. This happens to be a 16 inch width, but they also make this in 24 inch width. Um, we thought this was a really nice product. It's, it, it does it is load tested uh, for 200 pounds in one of these sections. The problem again was more from a cost standpoint. Just when we got to 850 feet of this material, it started to be cost prohibitive. We do continue to use this product though, when we're actually putting the boardwalk in place, we could take these small attic deck sections, set it down there. It just increases our footprint on the marsh and spreads our weight out a little bit and helps us uh, minimize our impact actually as we're putting in the boardwalk pieces. So this is a material that we do use uh, in the reserve. Our final solution though, for the, for the total boardwalk length, was this marine grade trap wire. This is something that uh, a company down the street makes uh, for us. 
They use this for lobster trap, crab traps, uh, ship it all over the world. It comes in rolls so they can cut it to any length we want. In this case, uh, we wanted a 24 inch surface with three inches bent up on either end. And the idea of this was to give us a little bit of a bumper as we took carts up and down this boardwalk. It would just help from keeping the, uh, the equipment from falling off the side of the boardwalk. The cost factor is what made us decide to go with this. This is a four foot panel. 24 inches in width, three inches bent up either side. Um, the material itself with the, with the cutting and with the bending ends up to be $12.50 uh, for a four foot uh, length of it. It's marine grade wire covered with vinyl, so it'll last out in a marine environment. We didn't have to worry about that. It's al also uh, photo resistant and it, it's light penetrating. So the light will penetrate through the boardwalk and uh, allow the plants to grow right underneath our boardwalk. So this was the material we decided to go with um, both on a cost factor, on the marine application of it, and on the light penetrating. So what we do is we lay on, uh, this is an eight foot piece that we're building today. So we lay on two four foot panels. And the only thing you need to be careful with here is that they don't stick out over the edges too much because another piece is gonna go on to the end and that they're fairly lined up. And then to fasten this on uh, to the deck here, we actually use uh, these rubber cleats. Again, these come from the same company, so they use these, these are made for this mesh wire. Uh, they have little grooves in them, uh, four little grooves in them that, that actually grip the wire itself. And then these are stainless steel uh, ring shank nails, uh, again, from the same company, so we were able to buy this all in one place. So what we'll do is we'll just nail down eight of these cleats on here and attach these two sheets of wire uh, onto our boardwalk frame. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and nail these down. I'll just check my, make sure that my boardwalk's not hanging over. Just make sure that none's sticking up. So with that, you can see the, the two sheets of wire are now attached to the boardwalk frame itself. So what we're gonna do, our next step is we'll take this out of the jig, this is ready to go, and we'll just show you how we'd place that actually out on as the next piece of boardwalk in the field. So what we've done now is we've taken that piece of boardwalk that we just built, and we're gonna put it in place onto an existing piece. We just slide that down. That's what the purpose of that two by 10 sticking out on, the, on each one, it captures the next piece going down. And then we come down to the end here. <clears throat> And we want the whole boardwalk to be elevated off the marsh to allow uh, tidal flow underneath the boardwalk and to allow those marsh grasses to grow. So we decided we need to elevate them. And we again, cost was a factor. So what we came up with was literally just milk crates off the shelf. We like the snowshoe design on these uh, it, because it lets the grass actually grow through that and again, gives us some tidal flow through it. We were struggling a little bit about how to attach the boardwalk onto the milk crates. Uh, and actually one of our uh, park supervisor came up with the idea of just taking a spare piece of 24 inches of two by four and sliding it right through the handles of the milk crate. Then we just lift the boardwalk up and just snap that into place. And we only put that on halfway on onto this piece of two by four because the next uh, piece of boardwalk will just snap on, set right on that same piece. The wire will sit on top of this uh, two by 10 that sticks out on the end. And then we'll be able to cleat the two pieces of boardwalk together uh, and attach the whole thing. At that point, the boardwalk is essentially free floating if you weren't in a title situation, that would be enough right there. But uh, in a title situation, the last step we need to do is we just put a, a pressure tree, a two by two driven into the marsh, and then we just screw that onto these, these pieces of two by four, thereby uh, fastening the, the boardwalk to the marsh. But to remove the system, we remove the two by two, uh, take off this last cleat, lift the boardwalk piece right up off the milk crates, and remove the whole boardwalk uh, from the marsh. So our impact is the footprint of the uh, crate itself. And we found that even with that, because it's got a snowshoe pattern, that the grasses tend to grow up right through um, the milk crates and uh, water can flow through the milk crates as well. Main thing we like about this design is it's modular. We can build a 12 foot piece, a four foot piece, or an eight foot piece. We do have to deal with uh, turning points. Um, so we've built six by six foot frame turning points using the same decking material on top to just make the 90 degree angles with our carts when we're out there. But we're able easily, if a researcher needs to get to another part of the marsh, just to add on additional panels off the side here um, and make turns and get to other parts of the marsh. The cost was a factor throughout. Each eight foot panel, a eight foot piece of boardwalk is a $50 cost or $6.25 per linear foot. 
which given the other options we felt it was reasonable. Remember we were building 850 feet, so we built roughly about 120 uh, panels like this. They've been out on the marsh surface now for 10 months. Recently they've gone through a, a four foot storm surge associated with Hurricane Sandy. Um, so we were a little worried how they'd perform at that point, but everything is in fine and we've actually been using the, the boardwalk since that storm. Um, so we're very satisfied with the design given that we we're looking for something that was temporary in nature, light penetrating, allowed us to move the equipment on and off the marsh, also modular in design so we were able to reach different parts of the marsh and move things around as need be. Uh, and hopefully we'll get uh, life out of this boardwalk past this project and we'll be able to use it for additional applications.